In my own work, I aim to bridge the inner world of dreams as access through sleep and the subconscious realm with the waking consciousness of our everyday reality. I am interested in all the areas of human existence that are not readily accessible to us. So when I was first approached with the idea of conceiving a show at the High Lanes Gallery, it seemed natural to me to respond in some way to the presence of the nearby ancient passage tombs, such as uh, Newgrange, given my own attraction to things that are shrouded in mystery. But during the process of planning for the show, Aifa sent me an image of the painting Spell of the Wood by Nano Reed, the wonderful Irish painter who was born in Drogheda. Spell of the Wood depicts a person asleep and as seen from above. The painting is rendered in muddy yellows and greenish hues as well as grey tones which range from dark to light and whose function it is to, to define the pictorial space and embed the figure asleep in it. To me, the wood is not necessarily apparent in this picture, but there is a strong sense that we are being pulled into another world, which is emanating from the figure, whose outlines, I believe, have been scratched into the paint by the artist, so that the ground or the earth on which the figure lays forms part of the sleeper's body. Both the painting and its title are so evocative. Together, they contain the magic of a spell, the enchantment of the wood, and a sleeper who dreams and pulls us into his or her dream world, which seems to come alive through the physical connection with the earth. Uh, I decided to take the title of this painting and make two large paintings which would embody on the one hand the spell and on the other hand the wood. The Highlands Gallery offers ample space with long horizontal walls and I have been waiting for, for an opportunity to explore working on a larger scale and thought this the perfect opportunity to do so. So I decided to go for the longest possible canvas I could fit into my studio and pretty much went to work. Since this was the first time working on such a scale, I thought it necessary to make some preliminary drawings. But after a while I realized I just needed to jump right in and tackle these long freeze-like canvases. The extreme horizontality was a challenge. Since 2014, when I transitioned to abstraction, my canvases have been exclusively vertical. So this required somewhat of a shift in my visual lexicon or in the way I related to the dimensions of the surface at hand. Spell, which is made using a reduced palette of black, white and greys, came together with ease and clarity. I thought about the precision that was required to cast the spell, the clarity of intent that had to fill the shape of speech for a spell to be effective. So it was obvious to me that this work had to be monochrome, keeping things reduced and pared down. I worked on it twice over the course of two days, then it was done. As for the painting which would represent wood, I started it out like I did the series of paintings that I made at the beginning of the pandemic, which was to use spray paint, um, mostly primary colours, but with the odd secondary or tertiary colour thrown into the mix. These I would put down in vertical lines to make a loose structure that runs along the canvas, not dissimilar to what a wall of reeds looks like, but coloured and with more space. At first, the painting was faint and almost ghostly, but as I continued working, the forest grew, and as the colours got stronger, the elements in the painting started to form themselves into an abstracted but very lively imagined wood. Whilst spell emanates an elegant, cool and mental energy, wood in comparison is rambunctious and vital. 
It invites us to get lost in the wood, to celebrate the magic of the natural world of which we are part of. Spell, on the other hand, is about a different kind of magic, one that requires authority and a focused will. The lines that characterize my abstract paintings of the last eight years already appeared before I had even started painting in a piece called Untitled 1993, which is a sculptural floor work made of cloth and wool and was created whilst being a student at Chelsea College of Art in London. This work is based on the principles of Davidic Square and Indian mathematics, a variation on the typical 9 by 9 multiplication table that reveals numerous geometric patterns and symmetry. Developed over centuries by various cultures, such magic squares have often found their way into art, where the number magic exudes a mysterious aura as in the context of the complex iconography and symbolism of Albrecht Dürer's engraving, Melancholia. I was very interested in the early abstractionists that were working at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century with their intense explorations of mysticism and spiritual realities. Artists like Paul Klee, Kandinsky and Mondrian, to name just a few, brought considerations of the existence of other worlds into art in a tangible and concrete way, without resorting to description. This is something that I'm also keenly aware of in my own practice. And I think it is partly responsible for my return to the shores of abstraction. My sculpture practice during the years at art college was involved in exploring minimalism and abstract painting, but making a connection to the everyday by simply choosing materials that were ordinary in a way and belonged to the, to the domestic realm and interior space. I wanted to include this work here at the High Lanes because I love the way ideas connect and evolve over time in a cyclical and often obscure manner. And to see the most recent paintings where the linear is such a constant element in relationship to the floor piece that was first made 29 years ago is so fascinating to me. In this more recent, larger version from 2017, we have the tangles of yarn echo the lines that run through my painted surfaces, like a manifestation of a vision of what the future would bring. The oil stick and paper works have a strong temporal quality, and each group of works has a slightly specific language or particular theme that comes out of and belongs to a certain period during the course of the year. I've always made works on paper in tandem with my painting practice, but during the last two years, there has been an almost continuous production of these paper works, which over time have really morphed into small paintings and now form a considerable part of my body of work. In fact, I feel they are necessary to the honing of my creative energies to the sharpening of a kind of inner awareness. The 22 oil stick paintings of three different dimensions which are going into this show will be used to make a sort of visual forest and I would like to place Nana's painting at the center of it, hidden but in plain view, so to speak. 